Welcome to Relation Tales. Please like this video and subscribe Relation Tales. That evening, I entered the restaurant with an air of calm and certainty, wearing a fitted suit and carrying an envelope with a purpose. My arrival was silent but thunderous, disrupting the romantic ambience with an invisible storm. There, across the room, Ella and her companion, Dean, exchanged familiar smiles and knowing glances the sort she used to reserve just for me. Ella, my wife, was an artist, a vibrant spirit who lived for creativity and expression. Our routines were different yet complementary. I was an attorney, meticulous and precise, while she painted her world with spontaneity and color. Her recent distance was unsettling. She was often lost in thought, her once bright energy dimmed, claiming a new project was consuming her. Though I wanted to believe her, I sensed something was amiss. Dean, the man now sitting with her, was a charming investor she had met at a gallery, a figure who could appreciate her work and potentially open new doors for her. Yet, watching them now, I could see it went beyond professional admiration. I knew what I was looking at, and it shattered every illusion I'd held onto. Taking a deep breath, I walked up to their table, each step deliberate. Good evening, I greeted, forcing myself to keep my tone civil. Ella's face paled. Dean's smirk faded. Without waiting for a response, I slid the envelope across the table. For you, Ella. I believe it's time. Dean shifted uncomfortably, suddenly aware of the trouble brewing. Ella looked at the envelope with widening eyes, her fingers trembling as she picked it up. I could see the plea in her gaze, her silent hope that I hadn't come with the devastating evidence she feared. But the truth was there, and there was no hiding. This is... Her voice faltered. A divorce, she whispered. She reached out to me, a tear slipping down her cheek, but I stepped back, immune to her familiar charm. This was the culmination of weeks of suspicion, of lies and excuses, of her betrayal eroding our one solid foundation. But then a twist. Dean leaned back, a dark smile crossing his face. You really thought she chose you? He asked her coldly. Shock registered in her eyes, confusion blending with betrayal as she realized she had been a pawn in his hands as well. He hadn't been after her heart. He was after my influence and access, and Ella had been the ideal bridge. Dean's plan was as cold and calculated as any high-stakes chess move. He wanted access to my network, my connections, and Ella, in her misplaced trust, had handed it over to him in exchange for the illusion of love. My heart hardened further. And for the first time, I saw beyond my pain. This wasn't just betrayal. It was manipulation of the cruelest kind. The confrontation ended with Ella sobbing, broken by both revelations, while Dean walked out, unapologetic. As I watched him leave, I knew the damage wasn't yet fully realized. I was now determined to expose his network of deceit, using every resource I could muster. And so, the war began a battle not only for justice but for the life I had built and nearly lost. Ella left the restaurant in a daze that night, trying to process the betrayal she had suffered and inflicted. She returned to our shared home, but the once welcoming walls felt like prison bars, confining her with guilt. The next morning, I was already gone, my routine unbroken, heading to work with a newfound determination. There was a quiet war between us now, unspoken yet potent. Ella clung to hope that maybe, somehow, we could reconcile. Yet I was no longer the same person. At the law firm, I shifted my focus, applying the same meticulous approach I used to unravel complex cases to untangle the web Dean had spun. I tapped into my network, scanning through business and social connections. The more I learned, the more I understood the depth of his schemes. Dean had built a facade luring artists and professionals, promising investments while leveraging them to infiltrate their partner's businesses. Ella had simply been his latest, easiest path to my influence. Ella, meanwhile, tried to return to her art, burying herself in her studio with the hope that creativity could somehow absolve her of her choices. But every brushstroke felt heavy with regret. She thought of Dean, the man she had trusted so blindly. Dean had painted himself as the understanding lover who valued her talent and independence. He encouraged her to defy conventions, 
convincing her that she deserved more than the structured life I offered. But now, she saw his encouragement for what it was a ploy to get close to me. Weeks went by, and each day, I sensed Ella's attempts at apologies, her subtle gestures trying to reconnect. But every time, I held back, reminding myself of the betrayal, the look on her face when she had been caught red-handed. Then one evening, while I was sitting in my office, surrounded by files and the growing pile of evidence against Dean, Ella showed up. Please, she began, her voice small, desperate. Let me explain. I was, I was lost, but I didn't realize until it was too late. Lost? I responded coldly. Or were you looking for an escape? Ella flinched, my words slicing through the silence. She finally broke down, recounting her story. How she had initially enjoyed Dean's attention. How he seemed to see her in a way she thought I had forgotten to. And how he had eventually coerced her into sharing confidential information, promising it would be harmless. As her voice shook with regret, a part of me felt a pang of sadness for the woman I had loved. But the greater part of me remained steeled. I couldn't forget that this wasn't only about us. Dean's manipulation had reached far beyond just Ella. While Ella was trapped in her guilt, I launched into the next phase of my plan. I met with my lawyer, Robert, a no-nonsense, sharp-minded colleague who was just as invested in seeing Dean's empire crumble. Through a series of meetings, we laid out a strategy, identifying other people who had suffered at Dean's hands. Soon enough, we had a collection of affidavits, each detailing how Dean had infiltrated their personal lives to leverage their professional connections. Ella, upon learning about the plan, pleaded with me to reconsider. Please, he's ruthless. He'll do anything to come out on top. You'll be risking everything. That's exactly why I'm doing this, I replied because he counted on everyone to be too afraid to stand up to him. The legal proceedings began quietly, each step meticulously calculated. I was determined to dismantle Dean's empire from the inside, to make sure he never manipulated another person the way he had manipulated Ella. And me. One night, as the case gained traction, Dean paid a surprise visit to our home. Ella had been staying there, despite the distance between us, and she let him in, her hands still trembling as she opened the door. I arrived moments later, finding them in the living room, Dean's face twisted in an expression of smug satisfaction. So this is your great plan? Huh, he sneered, looking for me to Ella. Throw me under the bus? You know, I could destroy both of you with one call. I held my ground, my expression impassive. I'm willing to take that risk. Dean's eyes darkened. You're making a mistake. I still have people on my side, people who'd gladly see you fall. Maybe, I said, my tone unyielding. But when the truth comes out, none of them will stand by you. You've deceived everyone. And unlike you, I have proof. Dean scoffed, but I could see his confidence wavering. He hadn't expected anyone to challenge him. He thought I'd be as easy to control as everyone else he betrayed. As Dean stormed out, I looked at Ella who was visibly shaken. The weight of her choices had fully sunk in. She turned to me, her voice a barely audible whisper. I know you'll never forgive me, but please let me help. Reluctantly, I agreed, knowing that her testimony could be the final blow to Dean's plans. Together, we continued our quiet campaign, gathering every piece of evidence, every testimony, every witness who had suffered under his schemes. The trial that followed became a spectacle, and Dean's confident facade finally cracked under the weight of his lies. The courtroom was packed the day Ella took the stand. She faced the judge with trembling hands, her voice wavering as she recounted her experience with Dean, how he had lured her, manipulated her, and eventually used her to get to me. She spoke honestly, exposing both her own failures and the depth of Dean's deceit. Her testimony was raw, her regret palpable. Dean's empire crumbled. His company, built on deceit, was dismantled, his assets seized, and he was ultimately sentenced for fraud and extortion. Ella's cooperation helped the case immensely, but it did not heal the wounds between us. After the trial, she moved out, finding a small apartment and attempting to rebuild her life quietly, away from the chaos. I watched her go, Part of me saddened by the love we had lost, 
but a larger part relieved to finally close this painful chapter. In the months that followed, I focused on my own recovery, on rebuilding my life and business. I leaned into my work, restoring the reputation Dean had tried to tarnish. It wasn't easy, but the scars became a reminder of the lessons I had learned. The strength I never knew I had, the importance of trust, and the resolve to stand up against those who seek to destroy. And as for Ella, she continued her life with a sense of quiet atonement, never quite finding the same happiness she'd once known. Her art became her solace, her only way to make peace with herself. The betrayal had changed us both, but it hadn't broken us. And in the end, that was the only victory that mattered. Months after the trial ended, life settled into an uneasy calm. The scars left by betrayal and manipulation had left permanent marks on us both, but I was slowly learning to live with them. I poured myself into work, not only to rebuild my reputation, but also to transform the painful memories into a sense of purpose. I'd grown determined to safeguard my business and ensure that it would become a force for good, no longer vulnerable to the schemes of someone like Dean. For Ella, the world looked different. She had retreated from the spotlight moving away from the bustling art scene that once filled her life with excitement. Her art changed too. She painted with a rawness that struck chords of remorse and reflection. Through her work, she found a kind of release, yet it could not undo the mistake she'd made. We were both on different journeys, struggling to redefine ourselves in the wake of all that had happened. Then one day, a piece of unexpected news reached me. Dean, defiant until the end, had somehow managed to pull a few strings from behind bars. He had arranged to have a tell-all interview published, where he planned to twist the story, painting himself as the true victim, a misunderstood businessman wronged by his former friends and partners. In his version, he would claim Ella and I had conspired to bring him down out of jealousy and envy. The headline promised scandal and I could feel the rage simmering beneath my otherwise composed exterior. It was like Dean to resort to one final attempt at manipulation, trying to salvage whatever shards of his reputation remained. For a moment, the familiar bitterness returned, filling me with a deep anger. But then I reminded myself of how far I'd come. This was another test, a last attempt to pull me back into his web of lies. However, Ella felt differently. The night before the interview was set to go live, she appeared at my office, her expression resolute. We can't let him do this, she said, the passion in her voice a stark contrast to the self-blame she'd worn for months. And what do you suggest? I asked, skeptical. I'd moved beyond Dean's games, or so I thought. There's still one thing we haven't tried. The one thing he's counting on us to be too afraid to do. Her eyes met mine, a flicker of the old determination I'd once admired in her. Tell the truth, the whole truth. If we don't, he wins. He drags us down one more time. Ella had a point. If Dean's story went unchallenged, it would leave a lingering doubt about what really happened. I knew this wasn't just about revenge. It was about reclaiming the narrative, about freeing ourselves from the last traces of his influence. Together, we crafted our own statement, recounting the entire ordeal honestly and clearly. We included how Dean had used his network to deceive and exploit people, including his manipulation of Ella, to gain access to my business. Our statement was concise, without any embellishments, simply a clear, factual account that revealed his intentions and methods. The next day, Dean's interview went live, with flashy headlines and provocative quotes. But it was quickly countered by our statement, which we distributed to reputable media outlets. The public response was swift and unambiguous. People could see through Dean's attempts to manipulate the narrative. His last-ditch effort to distort the truth only solidified the public's perception of him as a man who would stop at nothing for personal gain. As the days passed, the noise around Dean's story died down. In its place was a calm, a different kind of silence that felt almost liberating. We had finally cleared the air, set the record straight, and reclaimed control of our lives. A few weeks after the media dust had settled, Ella asked to meet one last time. We met in a small cafe, a quiet place away from the memories of our past. I want you to know that I'm genuinely sorry, she said, her
her voice steady yet weighted. I know I can't change what I did, but I also know I owe it to myself to make something good out of it. I plan to use my art to support others, to help people heal. I nodded, accepting her apology not with forgiveness, but with a sense of closure. I'd come to realize that while love can endure so much, some betrayals leave marks that cannot be fully erased. I wished her well, hoping she could find redemption and in some small way, peace. As for me, I continued to rebuild my life, moving forward with a renewed clarity. The betrayal had shown me that I could survive even the most painful losses, that I could emerge stronger. In the end, I was no longer defined by what Dean or Ella had done, but by the resilience that had carried me through. Time passed, and life continued. I poured my focus into work, expanding my business into new ventures, each step a reminder that I was building a life entirely my own. And while the scars of betrayal would always be a part of me, they no longer defined me. Instead, they were reminders of lessons learned, of strength found in unexpected places, and of a life reclaimed from the shadows of deceit. And so, both of us moved forward, marked by the past but no longer bound by it. In the years that followed, the shadows of betrayal and pain receded, making room for something far more powerful, resilience. My business flourished beyond anything I'd envisioned, bolstered by my dedication and a new clarity of purpose. Each new partnership and project was a testament to the strength I'd forged in the aftermath of everything that had happened with Dean and Ella. As my life expanded, I found joy in simpler routines, early morning runs, dinners with close friends, and time spent mentoring young entrepreneurs, helping them avoid the very traps I'd fallen into. One evening, while attending a charity gala, I crossed paths with an old acquaintance from the art world, an interior designer named Laura. She had known Ella through gallery circles and had witnessed the fallout of our story from the sidelines. Laura was different from anyone I'd known, direct and grounded, with a quiet strength and an unwavering authenticity. We struck up an easy conversation that felt, for the first time in years, like something genuine and untethered to the past. Our friendship grew gradually, woven together by shared passions for creativity, travel, and meaningful conversation. Laura wasn't interested in my past, though she was aware of it. Instead, she saw me for who I'd become. We started meeting for coffee on Sunday mornings, talking about everything from business challenges to dreams of future travels. Those simple moments became highlights of my week, something to look forward to in a way I hadn't felt in a long time. Eventually, friendship turned to something deeper. Laura taught me that trust could be rebuilt, piece by piece, in the small, consistent actions that define a true partnership. For the first time since everything that had happened, I felt myself opening up in a way that didn't carry the weight of betrayal or mistrust. With Laura, love felt simple and pure, an anchor, not a battlefield. Meanwhile, Ella had taken her art in a new direction, dedicating herself to projects that aimed to help others. She worked with charities, teaching art to children from underserved communities, hoping to make a difference in the lives of young people. Though we rarely saw each other, I'd hear about her projects from mutual friends, and part of me was glad to know she had found a sense of purpose and redemption through her work. About three years after our initial split, Ella reached out unexpectedly. She wanted to thank me, she said, for allowing her to make amends in her own way. We met for lunch at a small cafe in a quiet part of town. It was a peaceful encounter, free of bitterness or unresolved anger. She shared stories about her work, her new studio, and the small group of young artists she mentored. She seemed genuinely at peace, and I realized she had found a kind of fulfillment that had eluded her for years. I know I can't change the past, she said, looking at me with a gentleness I hadn't seen before, but I can keep moving forward and help others do the same. I nodded, grateful that we'd both reached a place of understanding. While I had no desire to rekindle our old connection, I respected the journey she had undertaken to find meaning and redemption. We left that cafe with no promises to stay in touch, but with a quiet understanding that our paths had diverged for a reason, and both of us were better for it. Back in my life with Laura, 
the peace I'd found deepened. Together, we traveled to places I'd only read about, Greek islands, mountain villages in Japan, and vibrant cities across South America. Each experience was another page in a story that felt grounded and authentic, free of secrets or hidden agendas. One summer, Laura and I returned to that same cafe where Ella and I had shared our final conversation. We sat by the window, the warm sunlight filtering through, casting gentle shadows over our coffee cups. It was then that I realized how far I'd come, how much I'd grown from the man who had walked into that restaurant years ago with an envelope and a broken heart. Looking at Laura, I knew I'd found someone I could truly trust, someone who stood by me not for what I could offer, but for who I was. She was my partner in the truest sense of the word. A few months later, I proposed not in a grand, elaborate fashion, but on a quiet evening at home, just us. Her answer was a simple, joyful yes. And in that moment, I felt a kind of completeness I hadn't thought possible. The wedding was small and intimate, attended by close friends and family. Ella sent a brief but heartfelt message, congratulating us and wishing us both happiness. And though it was strange, I felt a sense of peace reading it, as if that final thread connecting us had been gently laid to rest. Over the years, Laura and I built a life together filled with the love, laughter, and trust that had once felt unattainable. And while the memories of the past never fully disappeared, they faded into distant echoes, reminders of a journey that had led me to something real, enduring, and beautiful. Laura and I settled into our lives with an easy comfort, each day building on a foundation of trust that neither of us took for granted. We bought a cozy house with a sprawling backyard where we'd spend weekend mornings gardening or simply lounging in the sun with our dog, Milo, a rambunctious Labrador we'd adopted together. Life had finally become what I'd once only dreamed of, peaceful, filled with purpose, and without the shadow of past betrayals. Professionally, my business grew into an inspiring, collaborative hub that attracted young talent from all over. I implemented mentorship programs, teaching them not just the technical aspects of our work, but also the value of integrity and resilience. I'd occasionally share glimpses of my past experiences, guiding them not to fear failure, but to embrace it as a teacher. Those lessons, hard-earned and often painful, became my way of paying forward the strength I'd gained. As for Ella, our lives seldom intersected. Once in a while, I'd hear about her through mutual friends. She had built a new reputation as an artist committed to social causes, even establishing a foundation that provided art supplies and mentorship to underprivileged youth. She had found a genuine purpose, one that seemed to heal parts of her soul. And though I hadn't seen her in years, I held no bitterness, only a quiet sense of closure. Then, one spring evening, as Laura and I were preparing dinner, I received a letter in the mail with a return address I didn't recognize. It was from Ella. She'd written to inform me that her foundation was honoring people who had played pivotal roles in her journey, and she wanted to recognize me at a small ceremony. She assured me there was no obligation to attend, only a simple request for my presence. I showed Laura the letter, uncertain about how I felt. She read it with a gentle smile. I think it's her way of saying thank you, she said, squeezing my hand. And maybe it's an opportunity for you to close that chapter fully and finally. After a few days of contemplation, I decided to attend. Laura, supportive as always, offered to come along, but understood when I said I wanted to go alone. I needed to face this on my terms to see for myself how far we'd both come. The ceremony was held at a modest art gallery downtown, filled with paintings from Ella's foundation and artwork created by the young people she mentored. The room buzzed with life, students, patrons, and fellow artists mingling in an atmosphere of genuine joy. When I arrived, Ella greeted me with a calm, serene expression. Gone was the regretful sadness I'd once seen in her eyes, replaced instead by a quiet confidence. She looked happy, in a way I'd never seen before. Thank you for coming, she said, her voice warm, genuine. I know it probably wasn't easy. I nodded. It's good to see you, Ella. I'm glad you found your path. She smiled, glancing around the gallery, 
pride shining in her eyes. This work saved me, she admitted softly. It gave me a chance to rebuild, to do something good. The ceremony proceeded with a series of speeches from those whose lives had been touched by Ella's foundation. When it came time for her to speak, she shared her journey openly, explaining how she had once lost her way, hurting people she cared about. But rather than dwell on past mistakes, she spoke about the power of transformation and the ability to make amends through meaningful action. When she called my name, I felt a momentary hesitation. But as I walked up, greeted by applause, I realized that this moment wasn't about dredging up the past. It was a simple acknowledgement, a gesture that allowed us both to finally put the pain behind us. Taking the small plaque she handed me, I offered her a smile. Thank you, Ella. I'm proud of the work you're doing. It's inspiring. She nodded, her expression one of peace. And thank you for everything. I wouldn't be here without it. After the ceremony, I left the gallery feeling lighter, as though a long-forgotten weight had been lifted from my shoulders. Returning home to Laura, I felt the last remnants of the past fade, replaced by the warmth of the life we'd created together. She listened as I shared every detail of the ceremony, never judging, only understanding. Laura had always been that way, accepting me, scars and all. As time moved on, our lives grew fuller, bringing new challenges, joys, and eventually, the arrival of a little one, our daughter Emma. She became the new light of our lives, her laughter filling our home with a happiness I'd once thought I might never experience. I would tell her stories at bedtime, tales of resilience, courage, and the beauty of new beginnings. And as she drifted off to sleep each night, I knew that every experience, every hurt, every scar, had led me to this place, this life. Years later, as Emma grew and the memories of the past became just faint echoes, I found myself sharing a piece of advice with her that I had learned the hard way. Life will bring you challenges, my love. Sometimes, people will disappoint you, and sometimes you'll disappoint yourself. But never let it define you. Remember that every setback is a chance to grow, to find your strength. Looking back, I could see that the years of struggle had been worth it. The path wasn't easy, but it had led to a place of genuine happiness. My life had taken a full, transformative arc, reminding me that even in our darkest moments, there is always the potential for light, for growth, and for new beginnings. As Emma grew, she brought a fresh vibrancy to our lives. Watching her navigate the world with wide-eyed wonder reminded me daily of life's beauty and simplicity. She had Laura's warmth and compassion, coupled with a spark of curiosity that was entirely her own. Over the years, I learned more from her innocent perspective than I could have imagined, from the joy she found in the smallest things to the resilience she displayed when learning new skills. She was, in every way, a living reminder of the power of starting anew. Our home became a haven, a sanctuary filled with laughter, love, and the occasional chaos of parenting. On weekends, we take Emma on little adventures, hiking along mountain trails, exploring museums, and sharing our love of art, which was something she grew passionate about as she got older. Laura and I marveled at her ability to lose herself in her own creations, her tiny fingers expertly mixing paints and bringing scenes from her imagination to life. She'd spend hours sketching and painting, and it was impossible not to see a bit of Ella's influence there. One winter evening, after Emma had fallen asleep, I sat with Laura by the fire, a quiet moment amidst the warmth of home. We talked about how life had changed, the journey that had brought us together, and the future we were building for Emma. Do you ever think about how it all turned out? I asked, reflecting on the incredible shift from the tumultuous years to the peace we now shared. Laura smiled her hand resting on mine. I do. I think about it often. Life took us both on such winding paths to bring us here. But somehow, I think we needed every twist and turn. Her words resonated deeply. We'd both experienced heartache, betrayal, and setbacks. But somehow, they had shaped us into people capable of finding true contentment. And with Laura, I discovered that the hardships had built a depth of understanding and resilience that would have been impossible to reach otherwise. Our life together wasn't perfect,
but it was real, and it was ours. The following spring, Emma's Elementary School hosted an art showcase where students displayed their projects. She was thrilled to participate, and as Laura and I watched her proudly explain each piece to her classmates, I saw that spark, that undeniable passion, which had fueled Ella's art years before. It was as if a part of that creativity had been passed down, manifesting in Emma's youthful enthusiasm. It was a bittersweet reminder of the past, but now it felt entirely different, a part of the journey that had led us here, with no remaining pain or resentment. One day, Emma came to me with a question that caught me off guard. Dad, do you think everyone gets a second chance? Her question came after reading a story at school about forgiveness, and she was struggling to understand its complexity. For a moment, I thought about my past, about Ella, about Laura, and how she had helped me rebuild my heart and trust. Yes, I do, I answered, but it's up to each person to decide what they'll do with it. Some people don't see the opportunity, while others grab it with both hands and create something good. It's the choice that matters. Emma nodded thoughtfully, taking in my words in that serious way only children can. She had a wisdom beyond her years, and I had a feeling she'd carry that insight with her. As time passed, our lives continued to grow richer. Laura and I built our careers and raised Emma, teaching her the values of kindness, resilience, and strength. We traveled, made memories, and built traditions that would carry on for years. And as each year passed, I felt a deeper sense of fulfillment, a life built on love, trust, and forgiveness. Eventually, Emma went on to study art, traveling to places around the world, her adventurous spirit eager to explore all the beauty and creativity the world had to offer. And Laura and I watched proudly, knowing that she was carrying forward the values we'd instilled in her. One evening, as Laura and I sat on our back porch watching a quiet sunset, she turned to me, a peaceful smile on her face. Do you think we've made it? She asked, her eyes reflecting the warmth of the fading sun. I thought for a moment, considering all we'd been through to reach this point. Yes, I replied, squeezing her hand. I think we have, and in that moment, I realized the journey had come full circle. What had begun with betrayal and heartache had transformed into a life of purpose, love, and peace. A life that embraced every twist and turn, leading us to a happiness that was not only profound but enduring. We had truly found our way, and I knew that this was the legacy I'd carry forward, one of resilience, love, and the beauty of second chances. Years flowed by with the same gentle rhythm that had come to define our lives. Laura and I grew older, finding joy in the small, everyday routines. Our morning coffee, walks through the nearby park, and quiet evenings spent reminiscing about the journeys that had brought us here. Each moment felt like a treasured chapter in the story we had built together, a life that was deeply fulfilling in its simplicity and love. As Emma grew into adulthood, she became a talented artist, her career taking her to galleries and exhibitions around the world. She often invited us to her shows, and we attended everyone we could. Watching her pursue her dreams with such passion and integrity was one of the greatest joys of our lives. And while she was often busy, she always made time to visit, bringing stories of her travels and new projects. One autumn afternoon, Emma called with exciting news. She'd been offered a prestigious fellowship in Paris, an opportunity she had dreamed of for years. When she told us, her voice was filled with excitement and nerves. This is your time, Em, I told her, pride evident in my voice. Go make the most of it. We'll be here, cheering you on every step of the way. A few weeks later, she left for Paris, and Laura and I were filled with a mixture of pride and nostalgia, watching her board her flight, knowing she was embarking on the next grand chapter of her life. With Emma abroad, our home was quieter than ever. Laura and I spent our days enjoying each other's company, savoring the tranquility we had worked so hard to achieve. Occasionally, I'd find myself reflecting on the past, thinking about the journey that had led us here. Every now and then, I'd receive an update about Ella's foundation, hearing that it was thriving and expanding its outreach. She was still helping young artists find their way, 
and I was glad to know she had found her calling. One chilly winter evening, while Laura and I were curled up by the fire, she brought up a thought she'd been mulling over. Have you ever thought about writing it all down? She asked, resting her head on my shoulder. The lessons, the journey. You have so much to share. I chuckled, considering it. Maybe, I replied. I suppose there's something worth sharing. But who'd want to read a story about an old man learning to forgive? Laura laughed softly. I think more people than you realize. Your story isn't just about forgiveness. It's about resilience, redemption, and finding love again. Her words struck a chord. Over the next few months, I began to write, pouring the memories on a paper, tracing the arc of my life from the painful beginning through each triumph and setback, all the way to the peace I'd found with Laura. I wrote about betrayal, healing, and the beauty of finding love after loss. The process was unexpectedly cathartic, as if each word helped me lay the past to rest once and for all. When I finished, I shared the manuscript with Laura, who read it with tears in her eyes. This is beautiful, she said, squeezing my hand. It's honest and hopeful. I think it could help a lot of people. Encouraged by her support, I sent it to a publisher, expecting little. But to my surprise, the book was picked up, and within months, it was out in the world. The response was overwhelming. Letters from readers began to pour in. People who'd gone through similar hardships who found solace and hope in the story of resilience and second chances. For the first time, I saw my life struggles as something more, a journey that could inspire others to move forward, no matter what they'd endured. Meanwhile, Emma's career continued to flourish. She often called us from Paris, sharing stories of the people she'd met and the projects she was working on. One evening, she surprised us with news of her engagement to a fellow artist. She was radiant her joy palpable even through the phone. Laura and I were thrilled, already making plans to visit her and celebrate this new chapter. A year later, Emma's wedding took place on a warm, sunny day in Paris, under a sky as clear as her laughter. She looked breathtaking, a picture of grace and happiness. As Laura and I watched her exchange vows with her partner, I felt a profound sense of fulfillment. We had made it through every trial, every twist, and every painful moment to stand here, witnessing the next generation begin their own journey of love and commitment. In the quiet of the evening, after the festivities had ended, Emma found me on a balcony overlooking the city's lights. She took my hand, her expression thoughtful. Thank you, Dad, she said softly, for everything you've taught me, for showing me how to forgive and love without fear. I couldn't have done any of this without you. I hugged her tightly, moved beyond words. The only thing I ever wanted was for you to be happy, Em, and to know you're living a life you're proud of. As the years continued, Laura and I grew old together, surrounded by the love of our family and the legacy of resilience and strength we'd built. In the end, my life had come full circle, proving that even the darkest times can lead to light, that love can heal even the deepest wounds, and that every end carries the seed of a new beginning. It was a life rich in lessons, filled with forgiveness, laughter, and love, a legacy of hope I knew would carry on long after we were gone.